the things that we're questioning, right? And why can't we question? I want to deal with that. Yeah. Ever since I said something about the 99 sheep and the one lost, I tell you, there's so many people writing and they're saying, how can you interpret that the way you have? Because I've always been taught the 99 were the saved people. And the one lost was like, one more we add. They don't see it as Jesus walking away from a self-righteous people, 99 of them, that won't repent. And they're assuming when Jesus said, I've not come to call the righteous. I've come to call the sinner to repent. And they're thinking, yeah, the righteous. They don't have to repent. Yes, but who were the righteous? Your righteousness needs to extend see that of the Pharisees. Yes. Because they were the righteous ones. In yeah, the that's a good one, Lori. Yeah. Your righteousness has to exceed that of the Pharisees. Why? Because they were self-righteous. Mm-hmm. Well, the scriptures that come to my mind are uh, narrow is the path. Right. Mm-hmm. So if there were 99 righteous and only one sinner, then why is the path narrow? Mm-hmm. One thing that I've been thinking about uh, is the concept of being born again, becoming like a child, okay? And people have heard my testimony, but I think they assume that when I started over again, that when I repented and said, I have to start from scratch, I think what they're assuming is that I started from scratch and I st- I decided to only challenge my word of faith teachings. No, when I started from scratch, I decided to to drop everything that I've ever learned. I was going to drop the Trinity. I was going to drop the concept of Jesus being God. I was going to drop everything that I was taught about the book of Revelation and end times. I seriously wanted to start from scratch. Because I had been deceived by men. Mm -hmm. Now, I watch people writing me and saying, you have contempt. I I said, no, that is not my attitude when I started all over again. I literally mean Mm -hmm. for people, if they want to be free, you actually have to start all over again. You have to become a little child in your heart that says, I'm going to learn from scratch. I'm going to start with the only thing that I know is right. And that's Jesus Christ. I know he's right. Yes. Yeah, you start you start building from scratch again. Go right down to the foundation. I'm rebuilding. Mm-hmm. And so some of these people get really offended and, and they say, y- you can't question that. <laughs> Why? No. Why can't I? Jesus questioned the leaders all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he says, have you not read? Mm-hmm. He would refer to scriptures all the time. That, and uh, they wouldn't get it. They, they would say, what do you mean I'm stumbling over the stone? Or we are the builders that have rejected the stone. I don't understand you. What I'm saying about he will come with stammering lips in another tongue. He is speaking in another tongue. The the language of God. You builders have rejected the stone. You're stumbling over the stone. And this stone will grind you to powder. And they're all looking at him like, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. But Jesus knows what he's saying. He knows that there's scriptures that he's quoting, he is speaking a language that we have to learn. The only people that can learn this language, you cannot hang on to anything doctrinal or anything that you've been taught in the past. When I say start over, I really mean it. I had to start over. You should see Mark and I, there's nothing sacred. Like Lori always says, oh, we're going to have a discussion. I'll warm up the barbecue because we're going to have some sacred cow. (laughs) See, nothing, nothing is sacred. 
All questions are allowed. So last week I was talking about a people like this. A people that would respect Jesus as the Messiah. He's the one that we look to the king. And now when you say that, you have to actually take everything you've ever been taught about the king and throw it away and start from scratch. Because I know the temptation. You know, I was raised in, the, in Christian circles in the 70s. There was lots of quartets. And how many of those groups would, you know, talk about, we shall see the king, you know. I had to throw that all away and start from scratch. I knew it. I knew I had to start over. So I'm going to deal with this idea. There's a scripture in uh, Isaiah that we didn't deal with last week. It's Isaiah 32, verse 4. Speaking of this concept of a tongue and stammering, it says, The heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly. This is very easy for me to understand, because when I read, you know, Jesus goes along and he finds fishermen tax collectors. We're, we're talking about ordinary working people. Very few priests and Sadducees and Pharisees actually followed Christ. And I can see the problem. They would have a really hard time of actually starting from scratch. Like he said to Nicodemus, if you are not going to be willing to be born again, in other words, to start over again as a child, start from scratch, then you cannot see the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. And I see it today, all around me. People will even stop this video and say, what did you just say about being born again? Mm -hmm. Being born again to you means starting over and being like a child. You can't just take a scripture and then disconnecting it from everything else that Jesus said about being a child. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why they have to be children, because they're like little sponges. They just suck yeah. whatever comes to them. They're not having all this small question. This and, you know, well, well, this is what I know, so this is what I know. I don't need to know anything else. This is what I know. No. Is children that... just suck it all up. They just fill <clears throat> themselves with knowledge, and it's really easy for them. The idea for me, and how it impacted my life, is that here's a leader of the people of God. And so Nicodemus said he respected Jesus as a teacher. So he came to him with some questions. And Jesus told him outright, you must be willing to be born again. And Nicodemus said, well, how can I enter my mother's womb again? See what he's doing? He's missing what Jesus is saying to him. It's about attitude. It's about, are you willing to be childlike and to start over? And he couldn't get it. Like he was thinking, well, how do I enter my mother's womb again? See, he's carnal. Carnal people can't get this. Teachable people can. So I was just mentioning to you about the idea that Jesus called fishermen and ordinary people to follow him. Well, these are uneducated. In fact, I enjoy reading through the book of Acts where you've got Peter and the other disciples teaching and causing <laughs> trouble. And... Uh, the priests and the Sadducees and the Pharisees would always say something like, why are these unlearned men declaring what they're declaring? They're unlearned. How could you tell? Well, because they spoke plainly. Very? And nothing good comes out of Galilee. Yeah, nothing good comes out of Galilee. Because yeah. we're not talking about educated people. No. And I feel... 
that because I'm a bit of a hick, I'm a backwoods. We live in a small town. We live in a farming community. I know in that sense, I'm not educated. Sure, I, I went to Bible college, but as I've said, when I started over again, I literally took everything that I learned from Bible college and threw it all away and said, the only thing I'm going to hang on to is Jesus is right, and I'm going to remember the words that I've read in the Bible, but I'm no longer going to assume that my interpretation or the interpretation of men that have been taught to me have any relevance to the Word of God that I've read. I literally started over again. And so when I'm telling people start over again, I really mean it. And that's why I said, and, and people get angry, I said, uh, is John MacArthur willing to start over again, become like a little child and repent? Is Benny Hinn willing to start over again, become like a little child and repent? No. But you look at Paul and he started over again. That's a good example. Paul, you see, here's a very proud Pharisee. He went about persecuting this sect called Christians, the, these believers in Christ. And he, he talks about he had a zeal to do it. He thought the word of God was directing him. Then he had a confrontation with Jesus. And some people would assume that Paul didn't have any choice but repent. I think he did. Right there and then, he had a choice. Okay? Either to believe this confrontation on the road to Damascus and repent, or he could have said, this is silly, this is not what I believe, I, I'm going to continue on my way and persecute the church. But he repented. He had to start all over again. And because I've gone through this process, I actually know what I'm talking about. When I say start again, I mean taking everything I ever believed, throwing it all away. Not just the word of faith stuff. I was willing to challenge, okay, the, the topic of the Trinity. I don't understand. So I'm going to just put it aside. The idea of Jesus being fully God, I don't understand that either. So I'm going to put it aside like all that teaching from the Pentecostal circles about the end times from Hal Lindsey and such I'm going to take all of that put it aside and I'm actually willing to start from scratch to become a child again to learn with only one thing in place and that is, Jesus is right. That's all I knew. You can only build on that foundation. Right. If you, if you build that, that, that house on a different foundation, it's not going to stand. Right. But other people that have heard my testimony, they'll think, well, I don't have 30 years. Now, now let's be fair. I have not been growing for 30 years. I knew what was right and what was wrong 30 years ago. It didn't take me long to catch on. But the only thing that held me back was the fear of men. Yeah. I didn't want to preach this subject. I didn't want to preach about the concept of starting over to anyone. I didn't want to question publicly all of the established doctrines. Because it wasn't just word of faith stuff that fell apart when I read the Bible. Yeah, it's everything else. It's everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, I take the concept of, you know, whether God is a triune God or... I, I took it all. I didn't care what they're teaching out there. Or sovereignty. I was willing to put that on the shelf too. Yeah. I didn't understand it. I was willing to admit this. I don't understand all this stuff. I'm just a backwards boy. I want to start from scratch. I'm going to start with Jesus Christ. That's all I knew. Mm -hmm. 
Now for about almost 30 years, I was silent. Literally ran, ran away because of this message. I knew it was, it was going to get me in trouble and anyone that would associate me, would, I would get them in trouble. So I had to wrestle with that for 30 years. I literally wasn't growing that much during those 30 years. I was just hanging on mm -hmm. to the basics I had learned. And I didn't want to preach. I didn't want to teach. We have only been teaching online from the very day that I came to you and said, I'm coming out of this 30 year gap and I'm gonna start teaching again. So we have only been growing together for a year and a half, approximately. But you know what, why the difference is? It's the foundation again. Yeah. The true foundation. We knew the foundation was right. Yeah, yeah. I know I'm talking about myself and I hate it. I hate it. But the idea here is what I'm putting across is, listen, if I can learn as much as I've learned and what you guys have learned, and we're just backwards people, if we can understand as much as we do now, and the growth is blowing my mind, the things we're learning every week, every month, this is not stopped for a year and a half. My mind is blown every day. No, I'm not kidding. Mm -hmm. I get up excited in the morning because I want to crack open my Bible and I want to read something that I've been thinking about. Well, you're hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm actually hungry every day. I wake up and I want some breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the word of God that I'm after. <laughs> this morning I got up at 5 a.m. Because I wanted to read Luke 15. <laughs> so when people say, okay, this idea of starting over, they may have heard my testimony and thought, well, if I start over, I don't want to take 30 years. No, I didn't take 30 years to get to where we are. I learned the basics back, way back. Yeah. Like I knew, I knew that Jesus was right, right from the very beginning, right from the first few weeks of studying. When I say I repented, I dropped everything. Everything that I have ever been taught. I wanted to start over. Well, when Laura and I went to the, to the church, the one thing that we both agree with, and that is we learned that Jesus Christ was the true image of God. The expressed image of God. The expressed image of God. And when we learned that, we never, we never let go of that. So when we started hearing things like the sovereignty of God uh, or... Is Jesus truly God and truly man? And mm -hmm. does God put sickness on people? We always would look at each other and say, no. We, could we understand it fully? Absolutely not. But we knew that that wasn't the image of God revealed through his son because his son didn't do that. Right, exactly. You made Jesus your standard. That's why I'm saying over and over again in the videos, if you make Jesus your foundation to start over, if you make him your foundation, that's a safe place to be while you build the rest. Yes. Yep. Listen, you're not going to die. No. <laughs> if you take the Trinity and put it on a shelf, it won't kill you because you have that foundation. Actually, what God's doing is he's happy with that. Oh, yes. He wants you to know who he is through his son. Yes. And only through his son. Right. Not, not through man's teaching, not through the Pharisees, not through famous people. I can tell when I'm reading all of these comments that people are sending me. They don't understand this journey. 
because they're not willing to take all of their beliefs and then throw them all away and start from scratch. Men are not willing to humble themselves and say, I'm wrong. No. This is right. <laughs> Yeah, like Fonzie, I was r r r r I, yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> I always use that too. But I'm finding well, the more you speak to believers, the more you realize they are not willing to admit that they could get it, they could have it wrong. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. See, that's the difference. Mark and I will always admit to each other, we could have this wrong, and we don't mind shelving. You, could, you should say all the things we talk about that, that we'll all agree. Ah, I don't really understand that, do you? No, not really. <laughs> we, we'll get there, though. Mm -hmm. There's lots of things we talk about that we don't understand yet. Mm -hmm. But we're trusting in God because look at the growth in a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Like Mark's always telling me, we're not in a hurry, Ted. Mm -hmm. You know, this is all birthing out of this, mm -hmm. this teaching that we've been going through. He will speak in stammering lips in another tongue, a language that we have to learn from scratch. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And the only way you ever learned a language is from when you were born as a baby and you grew up with that language. And whatever language you were born into was the language you learned. Yeah. Well, the Bible is written in a language, a spiritual language, that you have to start as a babe, a child. Yeah, because when we are born again... We must learn learn the language of our Father. Right. Like I'll share with people some of the questions that are on my mind about the Trinity teaching. And people get angry and they'll say, Oh, you haven't settled that yet? <laughs> no, I haven't because all you guys tell me is, I just believe. Mm. That doesn't help me. No, no. And could we be wrong? Well, I'm not willing to go that far. Well, I am. I've been wrong on so many other things because I was willing to say to myself, am I teaching something that could be false? Start it all over again. So I'm going to go to some of the questions that I, I gave people. So what I got is a text from someone that says, Hi, Mr. Brooks. And by the way, I'll tell people, our listeners, they will call me pastor, but I'm not a pastor. No. And I have no desire whatsoever to be a pastor ever again. I was a pastor. I retired. All this teaching that we're doing, I actually came out of retirement to do this. I retired from my business ran my upholstery business for 54 years and then I decided to retire and then that's when I called Mark and I thought to myself, I don't have anything else to lose. Here we go. I've been sitting on this for 30 years. Nobody else stepped up to the plate. I wanted someone to. <laughs> I kept thinking to myself, listen, a 70-year-old man shouldn't come out of retirement to do this. Where's the young guys? I can't find them. They're believing everything they're being told. Mm -hmm. yeah. Listen, if a backwoods guy like me can open up my Bible and understand what I've come to understand, then anyone can. And by the way, same thing with the apostles. They were just fishermen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Peter the apostle could get to the place where he's going to stand up in Acts chapter 2 and preach all kinds of quotes out of the Old Testament, including the book of Joel, then anyone can. Yeah, from Galilee of all places. Yeah. yeah. 
And so the very thing that we've been talking about was, Mark and I have been asking the question, did Jesus grow in wisdom? Mm -hmm. And as far as we can tell so far, he did. How did you come to that conclusion? Well, we're not afraid of putting the Trinity aside for a moment. Mm -hmm. yeah, if he had all the knowledge to begin with, why did he wait 30 years to go preach? That's a good, that's a good one. Why did he wait 30 years? Yeah. Okay, these are questions that I wrote to someone. So they said, I've watched a few videos of yours now where you challenge the concept of the Trinity. I'm not challenging it. Mm -hmm. I'm shelving it until I understand what the Word of God is actually saying. People are not willing to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to take the concept of Trinity and shelve it. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, what if we come back to it and we end up believing it? Good. But for now, it's on the shelf. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm not afraid. Because the Bible, the Word of God has been so good teaching us so he says everything else you've taught is solid well thanks very much <laughs> but why are you questioning this i just wrote back and said we all know that the trinity is a widely accepted concept and i don't know this is my words and i don't know how to define my questions as some particular doctrine but if you think the Trinity is hard on my head, I have some questions that, that I can't seem to find answers to. I've had friends online simply say, I just believe it. I don't understand it. Listen, that's not faith. No. 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 You can't believe something you don't understand. No. Well, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, right? But hearing is much more than just hearing. Hearing is understanding, perceiving. Mm-hmm. Now, the Word of God has been faithful to us because we've gained much understanding. I can trust the Word of God, but I can't trust men that just stand up and say, like, I watched the one where John MacArthur has these sessions where the people walk up to the mic and ask questions and so they were asking questions about sovereignty and so on and John MacArthur supposed to be one of the best teachers stands up and says well there are things we just don't know we just believe and I thought that's not belief believing in something you don't know or understand is not belief that's not faith how can you trust something you don't understand it's like you saying last week, how can you trust someone you don't know? You can't. You can't. That's like a stranger walking up to you and saying, trust me. <laughs> I don't know you from Adam. Mm -hmm. And you want me to trust you. Well, I'm having trouble. I'm being honest. I'm having trouble with leaders standing up and saying, this is supposed to be John MacArthur telling us why we should believe in the Trinity and sovereignty and so on. And he just says, we don't, I can't really tell you the answer because we don't know. We just believe. Well, I'm sorry, I can't. When they do that, now they've just separated God from his son. Yes. Something that popped inside of me when you said that. You see, Jesus is the understanding of God revealed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if we say we don't understand something, how can you know God then? Mm -hmm. He has to make sense. Yeah, yeah. And we can learn to understand who He is because we have the answer in His Son. That's right. It just takes time for us to understand what He's saying. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even know what this discussion would be placed in a doctrinal stance. My questions, they'll try to label it. Mm -hmm. 
Well, what were you going to say, Lori? Oh, nothing. I'm just thinking about they stand on his ways are higher, his thoughts are higher. So yeah. They, we can't know it. So he's a mystery. So we just say, okay, this. God is a mystery. Yeah, so we just accept that that's that. I just was thinking, <laughs> if God is such a mystery, then why did he send his son? Yes, mm -hmm. to clarify who God was. Yeah. Why did Jesus teach for three years? He taught for three years to clarify who his father was. Why don't we get it? I know, I know. And so, here's my questions. And I said, my questions are not based on doubt. I can't accept the, the, the fact where people just say, just believe it. We don't know why, just believe it. I'm sorry. I don't care if the greatest teachers of the Bible in the whole world say it. I can't. I'm sorry. I don't respect them enough no. to take that statement and just say, okay, I don't understand, but I'll just believe it. That's why many of us are messed up. Because mm -hmm. we think faith is leaping into the unknown. No, I've learned that faith is walking in what you know. That's what Jesus is to me. He's the knowledge of God revealed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here's my questions. If Jesus is and was fully God and fully man, did God pretend to be a helpless baby that needed care and provision? Is that a fair question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did God pretend to be a young boy who needed to go to Egypt to get away from those who would kill him? And, and people write me, like even the guy that I wrote this to, why are you using the word pretend? Oh, again, are you going to be that, uh, that stubborn that now you're going to be angry at me for the words I use? I'm actually honest here. I'm actually asking honest questions. And I know our listeners are asking the same questions because they're ordinary people just like me. It's a very simple question. Did God cheat? God does not cheat. Yeah, I like that. Did God cheat? Yes, he didn't because there's no deception in him. No deception. Okay. Next one. Did God pretend to be a 12-year-old boy who said, I must be about my father's business? And that business wasn't carpentry. No. Yes. My father in heaven's business. Yes. Yeah. But God is the father, so how can he say, well, I'm about my own business? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. If Jesus is fully God, is he saying, I must be about my own my business? Own business? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> and people are telling me, don't ask these questions. Why not? Because they're doubt. Oh. I'm doubting the, the philosophy of men. That's all I'm doubting is yes. the teachings of men. I'm not doubting God. I'm not doubting his word. I believe in the revelation of Christ. I just want to understand. Mm -hmm. Since when are questions bad? I know. Yeah. But they're offended at these mm -hmm. questions. For sure. We'll put this on video and you watch the people that write to us. Yes. <laughs> They'll have a lynch mob. Uh -huh. <laughs> How dare you? Uh -huh. Well, these are fair questions. Mm -hmm. And then I'm referring to some scriptures I read in Isaiah. Did God pretend to learn to know, learn, learn, to know, to refuse evil and choose the good? That's in Isaiah 7. seven yeah. Did he grow? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Did he grow in understanding? Uh, Isaiah 53. Did God pretend to be a young man who would grow up? See, they get offended because I'm using the word pretend. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a backwards boy. Allow me that. I'm sorry. I'm just being honest. Then a good one that Mark and I have been talking about for more than a year. Did God die on the cross? God can die. 
No, well, that's my other question. Can God die? Did God sit or die? <laughs> Did he pretend to die? <laughs> I've been fair with these questions and I've gone all over the place listening to people teach. They actually do say that. God died. Mm -hmm. God died on the cross. Mm -hmm. How is that possible? Yeah. Yeah. God is eternal. Yes. He's a spirit. A spirit, a spirit yes. can't die. A spirit can't die. Yes. God is forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, God is eternal. So God, as far as I'm concerned, the answer is mm -hmm. God no. didn't die. His son died. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Did God raise himself from the dead? Yeah. We had one friend that said, yeah, God died on the cross and he raised himself from the dead. Jesus raised himself from the dead. I can't find the, uh, the no. biblical basis for that. No. No. I think if God died, the whole universe would unravel and, yes. and dead is dead. You cannot come yeah. back from it, no matter what you are. And they always bring up, like I'm thinking of John the Baptist, right? He was baptizing people, and then Jesus came along and said, I must be baptized by you mm -hmm. in order to fulfill Scripture. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, and then John saw the Spirit of God descending on him mm -hmm. like a dove. And, and they often use this as like a trinity cover scripture they'll say okay you've got the three because you've got jesus the son standing then you have the holy ghost coming from heaven and you have the voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased i could maybe go with that that's okay but here's my problem did the Spirit of God come upon himself? Well, that's it. God wouldn't need his Spirit to come upon himself. He already oh, has it. Okay, what they'll do, Lori, yeah. you said God wouldn't need. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they'll argue back and say, well, the word need is what's wrong okay. with your logic. Well, God, they'll say. the Spirit, it doesn't need to come down. He doesn't need he the Spirit of God him because he is God. Yes. Yeah. Now, <laughs> and he didn't say this is this is me. I'm I'm proud of myself. <laughs> and so I asked this guy, "Are these fair questions?" Mm -hmm. And he says, "Yeah, they're fair questions." But then he began to teach me, and he sent me pages and pages and pages, and I read them, and I thought to myself, "These are still not answering my questions." Okay, one thing that that Mark and I have been talking about, though. Okay, let's go back. If Jesus grew in wisdom and understanding, and he was a boy that grew up in Galilee, that means no advantages. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. And if he grew in knowledge and wisdom by the word of God, mm -hmm. then when he says to us, come follow me, I'll be your example, I can follow that. Yeah. But if he was God... He had that advantage. Yeah. How can he say to me, come follow me? Mm -hmm. Well, I can't follow that. Yeah. But if I understand that Jesus grew in wisdom and understanding and discernment, knowing good and evil as he grew up as a child, mm -hmm. and he says, follow me, I can follow that. Mm -hmm. Because what it's saying to me is, if he can do it in Galilee... With no advantages, then I can do it too. Yeah. But how did he do that? By going to the temple and reading the scrolls, reading the word of God. Well, well think about this. They went to the temple every year. Yeah. At 12 years of age, there was this convoy of relatives. And they traveled three days from Jerusalem and they realized Jesus wasn't with them anymore. Yeah. Three days. Mm -hmm. So Mary's frantic. She's, where's my son? So they had to travel back three days to Jerusalem. They find him. And there's other places that says that this young child was sitting with the priests and the scribes asking questions. And they were thinking, what is with this child? He's asking questions that no one at this age would be asking. Mm -hmm. 
he's really interested. This is rare, okay? So they find him. Said, so, what are you doing? Why have you left us? Like, we were looking for you everywhere. And he said to them, I must be about my father's business. So he knew who his father was right there. Yes. Because you see him at the, at the age of apprenticeship at 12 years old saying, I must be about my father's business. It wasn't Joseph's business. It was his heavenly father's business. See, that's an accusation that people leveled against Jesus when he was teaching. They'd say, who does he think he is? He's the son of Joseph, the carpenter. If he grew in knowledge and understanding with no supernatural advantage. Now, when he says, follow me, and people like Paul would say, follow me as I follow Christ, this is now possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He, if he was fully man and fully God, then why would he even have to go through that step from being born to adulthood? Well, I've always said that. Yeah, he could just pop in and say, okay. You know, <laughs> if, if the whole purpose of him coming to earth was to die on the cross, mm -hmm. then why did he go through all of that? Become a child, become a baby, become a child, grow as a young man, you know, run from his his assassins to Egypt, come back. See, in all of that, the Bible tells us everything he did was to fulfill scripture, mm -hmm. even the coming out of Egypt. You see, it's a picture again mm -hmm. of the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. I'm telling you what, I'm saying these are fair questions. Mm -hmm. Because I cannot accept, we don't know mm -hmm. You are just supposed to believe it. The only problem is these people are upset is that you are asking questions that the consensus think they've already settled. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have trouble with what you have settled. It doesn't make sense to me. And I want to make sense of it. And it doesn't offend me. It doesn't offend me either. Because I love the Word of God so much, I get up in the morning, I'm thrilled to keep reading. So when they get offended from these words, does that mean that they think that we're offending God? Yeah, we must be going to hell. I had one guy write me that. <laughs> You're going to hell. Mm -hmm. Really, because I asked some questions. Mm -hmm. Peter can being confronted by Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. when Peter says... Well, you know, the idea of you being the, the Son of God, the Messiah, I, I got that right. But now, I don't, you said something about going and suffering at the hands of the sinners. No, I, I, can't, I can't go along with that. Jesus had to correct him. He didn't sell the guy to hell. No, no. <laughs> he corrected him. And also, what did the disciples do when they didn't understand something? Jesus, we don't get it. Can you exactly. This to us? It's like Philip saying to Jesus, show us the Father. Mm -hmm. Oh, for Pete's sake, I've been showing you the Father this whole time. Mm -hmm. How long have I been with you? Yeah. yeah. I've been showing you the Father. Mm -hmm. Now, what he's saying is, you guys don't get it yet, but you will get there. Yeah, yeah and he's not uh, condemning us because we're asking questions. No. Questions are not against the law. No. Let us reason together. Let us reason together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't learn if you don't ask a question. Right. But see, I want real answers. I want them to refer to the quotes out of Isaiah about the child growing, mm -hmm. learning to discern good and evil, mm -hmm. the child growing in wisdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I'm talking about, you know, to people about the oneness between God and His Son, mm -hmm. I say it like this. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit completely agree mm -hmm. in unity as far as the plan of God, the purpose of God, yeah. the whole plan of salvation, everything. They agree. They're, 
they're the same character. Yeah. And then they'll write back and say, why are you using these words? Why can't you just say they're one? Yeah. Well, that's like saying the husband and wife are one. Yeah. 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 But they're not. They're not. They're one in agreement. Yeah, mm -hmm. Again, yeah. we come back to covenant. Why? Does the church not understand that idea of covenant? Mm -hmm. yeah. I was thinking of it this way. We know God is spirit because Jesus said we must worship God in spirit and truth. And we know that the spirit is the spirit. Well, the word is the spirit too. Yes, because it's inspired by the Spirit. Yeah. So it's, they all agree. The Spirit, the, the Spirit came to, what's the word I'm thinking of? He brought the Word to life. Yeah, He brings the Word of God to Breathed life. Breathed upon the Word. Breathed upon. Yeah. Yeah. Gave life to it. Yeah. Because the Word of God will not come alive in us without the Spirit of God breathing on it. Like, you, you can't... That's why, like we were talking about with John MacArthur, that's why he's carnal. Everything is physical to him. So the Spirit came on Mary and brought the Word to life. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He was the firstborn among many brethren. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's another thing that I have trouble with. Everyone says, everybody is made. In the in, after the image of God, we're all children of God. Just because God have an image. <laughs> well, yeah. I've got a problem with that because if that's true, then why do we have to repent and be born again and start over again? Yeah. If everything's just hunky dory the way we are, yeah. mm -hmm. we are not born in His image until we are born of Him through the Spirit. Mm -hmm. See, we're the problem is. Adam was made in God's image. Yeah, yeah. Then we're born after Adam's Adam. image. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why we have to be born again yes. after the image of the second Adam. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And then we grow line upon line, precept upon precept. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it takes us a little longer than 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. I don't see it as taking long, no, Mark. No, it Would I see it as it's an enjoyable journey sure. that doesn't end? Like, even in 30 years, it's still a blast yeah. to get up every morning and learn. See, Jesus, he didn't start till he was 30, but he learned who his father was for that 30 years. Mm hmm and the thing is, he could sit in, in, the, in the synagogue and he could confound the, the scribes and the Pharisees at 12. Yes. So what he's saying is that you can't know who I am if you're born of God. Yes. By the word of God. By the word of God. So it's not impossible.